Welcome back, everyone. We're here today on our Wellness and Weight Loss Wednesday. We're going to be talking about intermittent fasting, but a very specific form of intermittent fasting that has actually been shown to burn more fat and boost metabolism using these specific parameters. So excited to be able to dive back into this topic. I know that a lot of people are listening to the uh, intermittent fasting specific podcast. Really happy to see that. Again, always happy to go over your topic. So every time I get a question essentially from our community on intermittent fasting, I like to turn it into a show. And that's because if there's one person asking, then there's a uh, hundred thousand other people that have that same question. So again, always happy to take these questions. And if I haven't spoken on it before, okay, let's turn that into a show. Because you've heard me speak about in the past, and I'll link it up today. So if you go to stephencabral.com, forward slash 2126. So stephencabral.com forward slash 2126. That'll be all of today's show notes. Head on over there. I'm going to link back to the previous intermittent fasting podcast because again, this, this whole topic is nuanced. It's definitely not as easy as fasting 16 hours a day or just eating one meal a day. I'm telling you right now, if you do that, you're going to end up with hormonal problems eventually. There's just no doubt about it. And you're actually going to start to slow your metabolism. Again, if you're 25 years old and you're a male and you're saying, no way. This is the best thing I've ever done. Listen, I get it. I understand. I was 25 years old once. And also, uh, it works uh, in the long term. The caloric deficit and also the, the smaller eating window seems to just work much more um, easily for men than it does women. Uh, so again, it's not always the same for every single person. But eventually, it's going to lower testosterone. It's going to increase stress. It's going to throw off certain hormonal parameters. Is it going to happen at 25? No. But it's probably going to happen at 35 because, again, we have a clinical practice and we see these things happen every day. And eventually, you turn from 25 to 35. So start. let's start doing the uh, healthy living now. Again, you can do anything in the short term, but let's be careful of what we do for the long term. So what I want to do is I'm, I'm a huge believer in intermittent fasting. Uh, we've been using it in our practice now now for uh, forever, right? So it's been 20 years. Before intermittent fasting was uh, all the rage, uh, there was also practitioners using this for body transformation, nutrition, personal training, uh, functional medicine, et cetera. And that's because uh, it is the closest thing we have to the fountain of youth and overall health in general. And, and simply put, if you're is not as familiar with uh, intermittent fasting, it's essentially 12 hours or more, right? And you might say 12 hours without eating. That sounds like an enormous amount of time. And, and it does seem that way. It, uh, it's a half a day without eating. It seems like you would literally starve, but you know that we know that's not the case. We actually know that it's highly beneficial for the body. And here's why. It gives your body downtime, right? It gives your body time to place its energy in other areas besides your stomach and intestinal tract for digestion, right? And your liver, et cetera. It actually allows then for the rest of the body to get more of that uh, relaxed state where the blood flow isn't necessarily at the stomach and a lot of the energy going there. So that, that's a big part of it. I mean, no doubt about it. You're either digesting, eating, all that, or you're actually doing more repair. So what I'd say is this. It's 12 hours, okay, more than 12 hours. It has a lot of benefits, which I've talked about on previous shows, but it's easier than you think. So if you've never tried it before, in our practice, we'd like to do something really simple. Stop eating at 6 p.m., start eating at 8 a.m. You can extend it, right? You can shorten it if you want, but if you do that, it's 14 hours. Now, you might say, well, I, I don't like to, I don't, I like to finish dinner at 8 o'clock. Well, I'm telling you right now, if you go to bed at 10, you want to finish your dinner by 6 or 7 at the latest. And that's because if you do track your sleep, your numbers are going to go up dramatically, meaning like more deep sleep, better REM sleep, lower heart rate, lower body temperature. You don't have to believe me. You can test your own stats. People are shocked at when they start to move up that dinner time. But let's say you finish dinner at 8. Okay, finish dinner at 8. Don't eat until 8 o'clock the next morning. 12 hours, right? Simple. Two, three hours before bed. You're not eating. Get, stay in bed for eight hours or so. Don't eat for another hour after waking. That's it. So again, you can have a glass of water. I have, I have a podcast, many podcasts on uh, which foods break a fast and which ones don't. So definitely check that out. We'll link it up at stephencabral.com forward slash 2126. Okay, so let's get into it. How do we burn more fat and boost metabolism through intermittent fasting? Because I already said there's negatives when taken too long, but a lot of positives when done right. It's literally, like I said, the closest thing we have to the fountain of youth, no doubt about it, and it works amazingly well for body fat and body transformation as well. I want to share with you just a couple studies here. I'm going to link up about a half dozen to maybe 10 studies at, uh, at the link today, 2126, today's show. So 
here's the thing. And, and this, again, we've known this back. Uh, this, this, uh, and a lot of these studies are from like 2012 to 2016, 2018. So we've known this for quite some time. And the studies now are even, even greater. But back in 2014, in, uh, in just about 12 weeks time, people could lose 5 to 8% of their body weight. That's pretty impressive, right? So if you weigh 200 pounds and each uh, 1% is 2 pounds, that's 10 pounds, right? I mean, and, and we've seen even way better results than that. But these are very impressive by, and here's the thing, you're not doing anything else. So meaning that you're not changing your calories, you're actually eating your normal calories, but you're allowing for a 12-hour no feeding window, right? So if I multiply 200 pounds and I say the person's going to lose 8% of their body weight, 16 pounds, right? And, and so when we look at that, that's great for not changing your total caloric consumption, but actually the window in which you eat. Really, really important to look at that. Um, and then there are other uh, nutrition plans for intermittent fasting, where some days are a little higher calorie, some days are a little lower calorie. I talked about that on previous shows. Um, that has to do with uh, different ways of uh, macro cycling and up-down diets. So I'm not going to go too deep into that today. But what it's doing is that it's actually having a couple lower calorie days or maybe even a fast day and how that is able to improve overall fat burning and weight loss uh, as well. And you might say, well, how do I eat the same calories, but yet I'm burning more body fat and boosting my overall metabolism? Now, when I say metabolism, I want you to understand that your metabolic rate is not the amount of calories, or I shouldn't say that. The metabolic rate has a lot to do with the number of calories you're burning. That is correct. All right. So that's a big part of it. But it's not just about calories in, calories out. Because you actually increase metabolic rate, believe it or not, with the more food that you eat. All right, through the thermogenic effect of food, having to actually expend more calories with the more food you take in. Interesting to look at that. I'm not saying that that's a weight loss approach, but it is true. Another part to it is that it helps um, the thyroid, your uh, overall sex hormones, the adrenal hormones, and other hormones in the body, which I'm going to talk about right now, actually lend themselves to your overall metabolic rate. The rate at which your body moves, its speed, its heat, its energy production, your mitochondrial ATP production, whether you're not able to get into the sympathetic nervous system or not. These are all important things to look at. Okay. So the first one is insulin. I've definitely talked about insulin before, but you can't have a good discussion about burning body fat and boosting metabolism if you have what's called insulin insensitivity or desensitivity. What you're looking for is to be insulin sensitive. What does that mean? It means that when you take in carbohydrates and you break them down to their simplest form, such as glucose, and that glucose, that sugar is in your blood, you want your cells to have open receptors that allow insulin to attach to those receptors, unlock the door of the cell, analogy-wise, and allow the glucose to go in. When you do that, you are not adding body fat as long as there's open doors, right, so that the glucose can be stored. That's not body fat, right? It goes into your liver and it goes into your muscle stores. Now, here's an issue, though. What if you're not insulin sensitive? Well, now that you have free-flowing sugar all in your bloodstream, causing potentially prediabetes or type 2 diabetes... And it's going to cause a lot more inflammation. People abhor carbohydrates and all forms of glucose and sugar because they're whole locked onto this thing that any sugar and carbs are bad. It's, it's the furthest thing from the truth. If you actually have a rise in glucose, I'm not saying that you should have spikes in sugar all day long. I'm not saying that. But it does improve your overall fat burning potential. Because it also is better signaling of what's called leptin and ghrelin. And I have a podcast on leptin and ghrelin as well. And, and we'll try to link that up today too. Those are your fat burning hormones. Those are your hunger hormones. So if you're getting and you're telling your body, listen, we're getting food. It says, great. Well, let's keep burning more body fat, right? So insulin is a great one to tell your body to burn body fat or not. High levels of blood sugar, not going to burn as much body fat. Lower levels or normal levels of blood sugar, now you can tap into body fat. All right. The next one is this. Human growth hormone. I talked about this 
on my uh, intermittent fasting podcast show that went through what happens as you're moving through three days, let's say, of an intermittent fast, because it's very important. People think 16 hours is the magic number. 16 hours is honestly arbitrary. It's arbitrary. People say, no, you get into autophagy at, at 16 hours. It's not true. You can be in autophagy at 12 hours for someone who is more of the vata body type and, and really goes through that um, glycogen stores in the liver overnight. Uh, we've seen it happen all the time. There's no doubt about that, right? We know that. We know that this happens. Some people, it takes a little bit longer. It takes 20 hours, right, to get deeper into autophagy. So again, 16 hours, sure, it's a nice number, but it, it's arbitrary. It really is. It's a number that a lot of people shoot for because it's a simple number, number, right? Dinner to lunch. But check out my podcast on why breakfast is not the best meal to skip if you're going to skip a meal, okay? So growth hormone does increase, though. This is really important when you are fasting. Why do you want growth hormone? Well, you want natural growth hormone production. Why? It's an anti-aging anabolic hormone. It helps repair hair, skin, muscle tissues. It improves protein synthesis, your body's ability to repair the tissue on your body. And you might say, well, I don't want to grow larger muscles. It's not about that. It's about actually, it is the youth-based hormone. It's a big part of that. And it's great for the immune system as well. So really important. Plus, it helps burn body fat, right? That's a big part of it too. The last one I want to share with you today, because we don't talk about this one as much, and it's norepinephrine. Norepinephrine is typically associated as an adrenal hormone because um, it is signaled by the adrenal medulla, where the adrenal cortex is more from cortisol production. So you probably heard of cortisol. But if we think of it, uh, epinephrine as more like the first phase, and it gets the heart rate moving a little bit, it gets circulation going, uh, it gets us more into that fight or flight, right? Well, there are varying levels of that. If you produce a ton of norepinephrine, well, you can have accelerated heart rate, you can have all sorts of lightheadedness, maybe the color goes out of the face, all that, right? Well, we're not talking about that. But we're talking about a high enough level that you have energy, that you have drive, that you have ambition, that you want to exercise, right? All those things happen with a boost of norepinephrine. It's actually a neurotransmitter. And it's been clinically proven. I've got a ton of studies for you that I can link up here today to help boost metabolism and thus burn more body fat. And that was really important. That's a very important find uh, that we can see that. Now, I've got another study for you that short-term fasting boosts metabolism by up to 14%. Again, we're not talking about caloric deficits, which can be very detrimental to the body over time. But what we are saying is that um, a three-day fast boosted metabolism by up to 14%. Now, this isn't three days every single week. This is a three-day fast. We do this once a quarter in our community. It's the Equal Life Functional Medicine Detox. Again, a lot of people say, oh, I don't know about detox. I, again, listen, I get it. But if you look into the science, this is why people are getting such great results. I mean, these are things are scientifically proven. And it's great that science is catching up to what they already knew thousands of years ago in Ayurvedic medicine and traditional naturopathy. So this is a big part of why we do it. Give the body rest. Allow it time to begin to boost certain fat burning and metabolic hormones. And it's not just about burning fat. That's not the only reason you would do a, a functional medicine detox, right? That, there's, that's not the only reason. It's actually the last reason. But what happens is this. It's very interesting. As the body gets healthier and healthier, you return to your natural normal weight. We're not trying to get people um, so thin that it's not healthy for their body. No, all we try to do is we understand that we're trying to get you to the right weight for your body. We're not comparing your body to anybody else's and neither should you. So we just want to get you healthy because we know the more weight you are carrying, the less your quality of life. That means you'll have more inflammation, more joint pain, more difficulty with everyday movement. That's, I mean, again, the, that is straightforward. However, being more than 20, 30 pounds away from your ideal body weight causes that inflammation which is then leaves you more susceptible to every single comorbidity. I mean, literally, cardiovascular disease, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, and cancer, the four leading causes of death. So what we want to do is we want to say, listen, we just want to help you get as healthy as humanly possible. And as you get healthier through things like intermittent fasting, you're going to live longer. You're going to be healthier. Like that, that is how things work, right? It's an equation. It's literally a math equation. So this is really important for me to, to show you and to really look at. And then I just wanted to, I just made two little notes for you. This is really important as well, that 
And this is how the world works. And, and again, I, I totally get it. You know, I, I understand it. But that's why you have to be careful of the source. You really do. And I don't have to be the only source. I'm not saying that at all. You, you should listen to a lot of sources, a lot of people. But I have no underlying motives. I, I've done, what now, uh, 2,126 podcasts. All this information is yours. I've learned it. I just simply want to pay it forward. I'm the healthiest I've ever been, and I'm the healthiest I've ever been because of reading, researching, great mentors in the past, great practitioners, and uh, and this is the industry that I love. That's it. I mean, that's the bottom line. So I just want to share it with you. But here's the thing. In our culture, if something is good, more must be better, and that's simply not the truth. So we now, we now know for many people, and unfortunately, it's mainly women, the longer your intermittent fast, meaning the further away it gets from 12 hours to 14 hours, over time, typically after six weeks, the slower your metabolism gets. But you might say to yourself, well, you just said intermittent fasting speeds up metabolism and burns more body fat. That is correct. When not overdone. All right? Here's the thing. I, I've given you previous studies before that are groundbreaking. If you are going to do a 16-hour intermittent fast every day and you are not weight training with resistance, the weight that you are losing after about three weeks, the majority of it is muscle mass. You might say, well, weight is weight. I just want to be lighter. You have to understand, over time, that's going to lead to bone loss and osteoporosis, sarcopenia, and muscle loss, weakness, and a general catabolism of the body. More wrinkles, uh, more sagging skin, all of those things. So you have to understand, more is not more. Most people, 12 to 16 hours a day. If you're going to go to 16 hours, then you should be training with weights three to four days a week. Because the studies show that if you don't train with weights, the majority is muscle mass loss. Amazingly, when you train with weights, it is not muscle mass loss because you're keeping your metabolism elevated through weight training. Pretty remarkable. So that's why, again, all of this is nuanced. If someone's telling you 16 hours a day or more or 20 hours a day, and they're not telling you to do weight training, they're going to cause you to lower your metabolism. But what we found in our practice is that 12 hours to 16 hours is definitely the sweet spot. Most people should not skip breakfast, but it doesn't mean that breakfast needs to be at seven or eight in the morning, right? We can still do three meals a day because it's one of the only ways to get in seven to nine servings of all the good antioxidant-based uh, nutrition that your body needs. And I, I'll go into that on other shows. And then if you're not doing it every day, well, once a week, you can actually do a 24-hour one-day reset diet. And again, I have shows on that as well. And then every quarter, you can do a three-day and that is extremely powerful. But what if you did a three-day every week? Well, then you'd lower your metabolism, right? So we're talking about once every 12 weeks. How did we learn this? 6,000 years ago in Ayurvedic medicine. Then we started implementing what? Bioregulatory medicine, traditional naturopathy. And then, well, 100 years later after that, now we have the science to back it up that actually shows you that it boosts your metabolism by 14% on that three-day intermittent fast. So, so much more I am going to talk to you about, of course, but I wanted to bring this to you. Remember, it's not all or none. It's a happy medium that we're really talking about. Uh, if you want to hear more about that, that quarterly functional medicine detox, if you've never heard about it before, again, no pressure, no obligation, go to stephencabral.com forward slash detox, D-E-T-O-X. And if you want to find out more about your metabolism right now, your thyroid, your adrenals, uh, the sex hormones like testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, DHEA, uh, vitamin D, blood sugar levels, go to stephencabral.com forward slash labs and click on the stress hormones, mood and metabolism lab. That will give you all of that. You can do it right at home. And then of course, I'm here for any other questions. Just let me know. Post them in the comments on YouTube or right on Instagram and uh, happy to take care of those. Thank you so much. Enjoy the day. And of course, share the show with anyone you believe it could serve. Take care, everyone.